Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Uh, today we're kind of we're gonna do a different style of video. Um, we're gonna do like a, a walkthrough of OSG and how it went for me, and we're gonna make a video over here, I guess, and kind of go through it event by event. Um, kind of talk how I maybe made a mistake or how I could do things a little bit better, but just overall how I kind of performed for the weekend. So. The first event was, uh, so yeah, let's just uh, dive right into it. Um, so the first event was the standard submit press medley. Um, it went a 315 wagon wheel barbell clean and press to a 220 dumb circus dumbbell. It was supposed to be a 375 yoke press, but um, a lot of athletes were struggling with it. So they lowered it down to like 335, I believe. And then into a uh, 300 pound block, 303 pound block press um, with only 60 second time limit. So it's a very fast paced event with lots of running in between. So yeah, we'll just dive in and kind of see how it went. I'm in the right lane there. Three fifteen, easy clean and press. 220 dumbbell. Took a little bit to get set, but pressed it away from myself a little bit there, but brought my feet together. That's a PR for me to hit a 220 dumbbell in competition, so. Oh, it's so, this anchor was so hard to press because the curved bottom threw so many guys off. That's the weight I could easily hit in training, but. Wasn't used to that curved bottom. Took a little walk with it there. Not quite. I should have just cleaned it and then tried to press it. I d did my thruster technique and a little hard. And just ran out of time. So, yeah, overall, I mean, pretty good event for me considering um, pressing is my biggest weakness. So, um, I finished that event in 16th out of, I think there was 36 or 38 guys. So, I mean, realistically, that's kind of where I thought I would be mid pack, just slightly above mid pack. Um, if I would have got that yoke on my first attempt, I probably would have been top 10 for sure in that event. But, um, with maybe a chance of getting the, the block, cause I've hit the block in training, but only two guys we're able to finish the whole run. So it was a pretty challenging event for everyone. So um, yeah, finish that in 16th. So in between events, there was about roughly 380 athletes. So after event one, I had enough time to go back to the hotel. We had a, I had a cold bath. I ate, I took a little nap and then came back and still watched like four weight classes. So very long drawn out days, but if you can, get your recovery work in and keep hydrated and fueled. It's uh, it's not that bad of a day, but just long. So I was feeling fresh for this next event, which is the sticks and stones, timber frame carry into uh Dinny stone replica carry. So it was eight, uh, I think it was 790 pound frame for 50 feet, run back 25 feet, grab a 300 pound and a 250 pound stone and carry that back 20 feet, 25 feet. Um, I knew that it'd be a good event for me. Grip's a pretty good event for me. I can move fast. Um, these frames were a little challenging. The handles were only one inch, so they're very small. It shredded a lot of guys' hands, cut them open pretty bad, but um, yeah, it wasn't an issue for me. So we'll just get started here. I'm in the uh, lane closest to us. Lane one. You can hear my wife in the background screaming. Easy frame, sprint back. Easy pick, and nice controlled steps. And I was pretty hyped up here because I thought that was going to be the winning time. Um, uh, I got second in that event by less than a second to Wes. So another fellow Canadian who's uh, also got very good grip and he's fast and athletic. So um, pretty good result for Canada coming one, two in that event. Just going to show that Canadian athletes do truly have some of the best grip in the world. 
So that was day one. Um, we did two events day one, two events day two. And then if you're in the top 10 after four events, you got to do day three. So we'll get into that. But first event of day two was the deadlift ladder. Um, a kabuki bar for the first four bars. And then the last bar was a, a mammoth bar. It was a 10 foot long bar. So like all of them had of have a lot of whip. Um, the knurling is very aggressive, which is good on the hands, but hard on the legs. So, uh, my technique for this was just to go in and hit the first three bars with mixed grip because each bar was split timed. So if I could do them faster than anyone else, then I would get more points. So a lot of people strapped in for all of them. Some of us, as you can see in this heat, we mixed grip as much as we could before we went into straps. So, um, yeah, we'll dive into this video. You're smiling back there. I'm in lane three and Wes is in lane four. Suits are allowed. The other lane's not far behind him. And again, Andre setting the I had Terry Hollins as a judge, so he was pretty he was pretty strict on my lockouts, but these are big points when you're just getting it on the margins. Probably didn't need to hitch 765, but A15. I knew if I can get this I'd be good points because a lot of athletes failed at A15. Good left for Andre. Yeah, nice little hitchy hitch. We're gonna have all four competitors on the fifteen. So now the last bar is eight hundred and fifty pounds. I've hit it I've hit that weight for a single in training. More than that in training, but in a medley it's pretty hard to do. But I cracked it, almost got it to my knees. Not quite. But still, eight fifteen in a medley is pretty good. If, it, if that's an event next year, I'll for sure get 850 because I just pulled 905 in the gym. So, um, yeah, good event. Um, I never I got second in that event. This event was the third event. So, um, I placed seventh in this event. Um, again, uh, one of the guys who got the fourth bar, but just only two guys got the last bar. So... I kind of executed it like how I wanted and I was happy with that performance for that event. Good. Just wait. We got thirsty. A sponsor break. <sighs> sponsor break. Shout out to Supplement King. Shout out. So that was event three. Event four was the Gold Rock Survival Challenge. So this is a, a new event. Well, they've, they've done this event, a similar event to this at OSG before where it's like three implements or two implements into a, a sled and then drag back. But this time we had to wear a 120-pound Gold Rock vest in, uh, on our back. So, sorry. Jesus, vibrating. So... Yeah, we had to wear a 120 pound Gold Rock backpack. Um, so it was a little awkward bending down to reach the implements and then running back. You're kind of waddling like a penguin almost. But um, you, you can see if you watch the live stream, some of the guys would like pick a bag and then fall backwards. Or when they're trying to reach down, they just were a lot slower because it was a lot of extra weight on your back. So training this event, I think I only used the backpack like two or three times for like competition runs. So I kind of really don't didn't know what to expect. Um, loading events are typically good for me. I can move fast. The first implement was a 305 pound sandbag Atlas stone. So it was very big, probably like 22 to 24 inch diameter. The thing was massive. So it was hard to get your hands around. And the second implement was supposed to be a 350 pound Hustafel sandbag, but they never ended up making it in time so it just ended up being a, a 300 pound who's the fell bag and uh, i'll have to shout out josh spurgeon here in the lane beside me in warm-ups he said he's going to try and use the sandbag technique to lift the who's the fell which i've never done before ever in training and i was kind of skeptical of it but i'm better at picking up a sandbag than i am a who's the fell so i figured 
let's give it a shot. We'll see if it pays off. And uh, yeah, it did. So thanks to him for giving me that tip. You'll we'll see how I go. I'm in lane three. Yes, we do. Let's go. Okay, get top, let's see. Fifty feet each direction. Can he pick up the speed here? He is fast. Waddle back. <laughs> Fellow Canadian Joey, lane one. See, there's that sandbag technique where we're picking it sideways. It just frees up your legs, and then into a 650 pound drag. Hard to get it started. My carabiner was actually sideways, so I thought my handle was going to break on me. But Joey's checking over. He was catching up. So I won this heat, give a little pull, and I starfish back on the crash pad. So yeah, I mean, good event. Um, probably could have went faster on the drag portion of things. I think the, the carry was pretty good, but that event I got... Um, seventh in that event with 44 seconds winning time was like 39 by Andre. So, um, just have to move faster to make up that time. But overall, after those four events, I was sitting in sixth place overall with 116 points and, uh, yeah, made the top 10, which meant I got to go to the finals. So first trip to OSG making the finals, that was the first goal. And uh, we have to see what the second goal was. Okay, so um, day three was the finals. So that meant that top 10 from every weight class got to go and do two more events. So you go from, say, 380 athletes, condense it down to however many there is, 120. I don't know. Um, so it's a lot quicker, fast-paced, um, short downtime in between events. So that's good. I like the fast-paced keep the day moving so the first event of the finals was bag toss um typically a good event for me but sometimes that 60 pound bag is is hit or miss i've hit it in training i've hit it in competition but a lot of times i've missed it in training and sometimes i've missed it in competition so just something i need to get more efficient in and as you can see in this video i just got to trust myself and use the technique through the whole series um, the bags went 40, 45, 45, 50, 55, 60 to 15 feet, uh, height. They were probably 10 to 12 feet away. So they're pretty far away, but, um, uh, my technique was to just go and throw as many as I could from the line. But for the 60 pound bag, you'll see, I didn't follow that same technique, which I should have. So there's 40, 45, 45, 50. It's lots of clearance. My wife again, 55. And see, 60. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have done that. I had the height. I just was too far forward. And you can hear screaming words of encouragement. No, I'll, I'll use the full 60 seconds. Yeah, one more for good luck. Um, so yeah, I think that event, I ended up in fifth place with five and 15 seconds. I mean, if I would have use the same technique on my last bag, I probably could have moved up to maybe third or maybe second an event, but um, shout out to Wes for destroying that event. He finished all six bags in 17.26 seconds, which is like world-class. There's probably only maybe two athletes in the whole world who would give him a run on that event. So uh, I know he was pretty happy to see that event in the finals and, uh, yeah, I have to also shout out Joey Lavely. He's another Canadian who made the finals. Um, so we had three Canadians in the top 10. So that's pretty good. Um, it's actually mine, Joey's, and Wes's first time at OSG. So just to make the finals, all three of us were uh, pretty good, pretty good results. So 
So the last event was Atlas Stones. Um, pretty good event for me, an event I like to do. Um, this is a, a weight in series that I know I'm capable of finishing. I just kind of fell short on the day. But um, a little side note on this event, um, the night before, I was cleaning my uh, stone sleeves because I normally compete with uh, stone sleeves on. Um, in training the past couple of times, I was having problems with them sliding on my arms. So I took some WD-40 and a brush and cleaned the inside of my sleeves, let them dry uh, during the night. Then I get to this event and I spray my spray tack on, I get my stone sleeve on my hand and I go to move it and it slid. So I was like, oh crap, like I can't afford that to happen in competition. So I made a decision to just get rid of them and just use bare arms which i normally i i never do i think it's been like three or four years since i've done that so another game day decision where i made on the fly and it went well it just it hurts and i'm a baby so that's why i don't like to do it that way but it just goes to show you have to be able to adjust on the fly um, everything's not going to be perfect all the time so yeah so this event went from 300, 325, 350, 375, 400, 425, starting at 60 inches, and it drops down two inches every stone to the last one was um, 50 inches. So, I mean, just for reference, at the Shaw Classic, um, we had a weight similar to this, um, but it went to 450 all to 52 inches, and I got the 425 to 52. Um, in training, I was doing... 440 for triples to 56 so i know it's capable of finishing this but i just came a little short on the day but oh, whoops Three hundred. and you had to make sure the stone stayed in the little holes on top because if they rolled off you have to go get it 350 easy. Four hundred. And my wife again. So I failed this lift because I didn't triple extend on my toes. If you watch my feet, I'm flat footed the whole time, which I don't know why I do, but that's something I need to fix. But just, just a little bit too short. And I jumped back instead of, I jumped back instead of <clears throat> catching the stone and pushing it forward. I kind of came up short, jumped back to try and push it. And uh, yeah, so I missed that last stone. But I ended up. In fourth place with that event, I think I was the fastest time with, no, I was the second fastest time with five stones. So I think only uh, two guys finished the run, Wes and Nathan. So um, yeah, I mean, pretty good event for me. I just need to get more efficient in my extensions, which I know is a weakness of mine. I could pretty much pick any stone I can have in front of me i just got to be able to load it so it's no good if you could pick it if you can't load it so so yeah overall i mean i pretty much performed how i thought i would um when when you look at the competition roster and you see all these big names that were on it and to be honest some of them didn't even make the final so it just goes to show you never know how competition is going to go from what your gym lifts are like and what competition lifts are like are two totally different things. And it's easy to get wrapped up in that because there was a lot of very good pressers in the competition who didn't even make it to the last implement. There was a lot of good deadlifters who maybe made a mistake or got one less bar than they should have. So it just kind of goes to show that you can only control what you can control and just do the best that you can do and don't worry about anyone else. So that being said, my goal first and foremost was to make the finals and i did and then the second goal obviously is to try and make the podium because the podium gets a uh an invite to giants live which if you win or if you podium at a giants live competition you get to go to world strongest man and 
ultimately that's all of our goals is to get there, right? So I ended up in fifth place overall. So top 10 got this nice little, it was actually pretty heavy. It's a nice little medal. Um, top three got a very nice heavy trophy and an invite to Giants Live. So I finished in fifth place with 34 points. Fourth place was 42. Third place was 45. Second was Wes, 49. And Marcus won with 51 points. So uh, it's easy to say after the fact that if I would have done this and I if I would have done that, I could have got two more points here or three more points there. And I think in a perfect world, I still would have maybe just missed podium. So um, the biggest takeaway from this competition is I just need to get more statically stronger. I need to get better at pressing. Um, being quicker on your feet is never a bad thing. So keep that conditioning work up and be ath more, more athletic will always be um, to your advantage. And uh, next year, yeah, um, the goal is to make the podium, which based off of this performance, you give me another year, I can't see why I can't, um, re regardless of who else is on the roster. So all I could do is put the work in for myself, keep grinding day in and day out. Um, the best thing about placing in the finals is that means that I don't have to requalify. So this year I had to qualify by doing online lifts, which were like three max out effort, max out lifts um, during my strongman competition season in the summer. So they had to be in by the end of August. And I literally did four competitions every weekend in August and then try to max out my lifts just to qualify. So I got third in the online qualifier, which got me here. But now that I made the finals, I get an automatic invite to next year. So um, that will kind of free up a little bit of my time next year. So all in all, pretty happy. We had three Canadians in the finals. Congrats to Wes who uh, got an invite to Giants Live for placing second. And yeah, looking forward to see most of these guys again next year because we're all keep fighting for that spot to Giants Live and hopefully World's Strongest Man and keep putting in the work. I'm excited to see uh, where we go from here. So with that being said, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel and subscribing and following our journey this year. Um, it was a pretty good year of growth um, for both me and uh, my wife as the uh, the creator of all this content. So only going to go better and bigger next year, come back faster, stronger, better, more followers. And uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, another great year next year. So thank you for tuning in. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit that little notification button. And uh, remember if you ain't, no, just kidding. So thank you for tuning in. So for now, Let's keep this train rolling. No, that's pretty bad. <laughs> what? So thank you for watching the video, and let's keep this train rolling into 2024.